I give the word to Carsten Strothmann, who has a new way to learn force to present. And yes, hello. Go. Thank you, Bernd. So, Exorcism IO, uh, a new learn, way to learn force. Um, what is this all about? It's a website. Exorcism.io is the uh, the domain name, and it's a it's a platform to learn programming languages. And uh, there are currently fifty one different programming languages that you can learn, from the established ones so, such as uh, C plus plus and uh, Lisp and uh, Java and and the likes. Uh, also to some obscure ones, something like like MIM or Crystal. Um, and you can even learn assembly language. And some people might think that it's not a, a programming language. But you can do that there. It's free to use. So it's uh, you, you log in, you join, and you don't have to pay for this. It was created by GitHub employees. So naturally, it uses the, the Git tool chain. Um, Git being um, a, a source code versioning control system, a distributed one. It's all open source, and they promise that it will be free forever. And it's hosted on GitHub, so you can just uh, fork and clone and have your own copy of uh, Exorcism if you if you like to do that. And soon there will be uh, a fourth language track. That language track has been started, but it, there's still a lot of work to do before the first student can start learning. So um, how does exorcism work? Um, people who want to learn a new programming language through exorcism, they sign up and um, they either create their own account on exorcism.io or they can log in with their existing GitHub account if they already have such an account at GitHub. And then they select one or more languages they want to learn. And uh, students can select any number of, of languages they want to learn. So they can hop like on Mondays, I, I learn uh, PHP. And Tuesdays, I, I learn uh, Kotlin. And on Fridays, I learn Rust. Yeah? And, and Sundays, uh, fourth, something like that. Um, it is all driven by a command line interface tool, uh, which is a, a standalone command line utility written in Go. So it's uh, uh, all, uh, it has no dependencies. It's, uh, it's completely self-sufficient. Uh, you just download the tool, or if you like, you compile it yourself. Uh, you download the source code and compile it yourself, but you can download that for the uh, uh, popular operating systems like Windows, Linux, uh, Mac OS, and uh, some of the not so popular but still nice operating systems like BSDs. And uh, then you use that to download the uh, exercises uh, in the language you choose. And also you submit your exercises through that tool. Next, you read the exercise instruction. Depending on language, there are something like 50 to 200 different exercises um, for, for the language to learn. And this is here the, the classic Hello World, which is usually the, the first exercise you see. And uh, this is from the, uh, the Emacs Lisp uh, language track, which I'm currently uh, taking uh, because I, I like Emacs and also I want to learn how exercise.io works in order to understand what's needed for the fourth track. Then uh, you download an exercise with exercise download, uh, the exercise name and the, the language track. And then you have the files on your disk. And uh, usually you have an, an empty source file, uh, which you then fill with what's ever needed to complete the exercise. And the exercise must be in a way that it can be automatically checked whether the code is correct. So then the, the student starts coding a solution. Uh, and the student can use any help, like browse the web, look at Stack Overflow, uh, read books, uh, go through tutorials, uh, ask friends. 
and um, the, the exorcism track gives hints where to find resources. However, exorcism itself is not the tutorial. So you won't find uh, information directly how to uh, program in a C language on exorcism. Instead, you find pointers to like the, the standards book for that language and some website that explain and maybe some YouTube videos that explain how to uh, code in that language and how to learn that language. But uh, the, the tutorials itself are not part of exorcism. And once as a student you think you have the solution and it works, you submit that to the system with exorcism submit and then the file that contains your solution. And that solution is then going into the uh, continuous integration engine of, uh, of GitHub and it's executed and uh, it's then checked whether it produces the result the person who created the exercise and envisioned as the correct result. And if it's correct, uh, the, the next exercise is then unlocked and you can go uh, further. Um, if it's not correct, you can either decide to go back and fix your exercise, or you can decide to, uh, to submit it anyway and, and, and see the results that other people have uh, successfully submitted to the system. And also as a student, you can decide whether your solution should be public or not public and whether other people uh, are allowed to uh, comment on your code. Because um, exorcism also is about learning good style. So even if you already know a programming language, it might make sense to, um, to, to go through the exorcism track for that language because you might get valuable feedback from others, from the uh, community around there. And, and I think this is the most important part, is that every language track has mentors, uh, one or more mentors, and the mentors review the submitted solutions and give advice. They give new ideas how um, the exercise could be solved in maybe a more elegant way, how it could be done more idiomatic for the language. Uh, they point out bad style, things that can hurt you later on if you uh, write bigger projects in, in that language. So they inform you about the things to avoid in, in the language. And then, yes, you have unlocked the, the new exercises and you then continue through the track until you have um, all the, the, the exercises in the track um, finished and then you should have uh, a better understanding on that programming language. And uh, if you like, uh, you could also review the solutions from the other students uh, or yeah, review them, give your commands um, and such. So about the fourth track. Uh, we have a repository for the fourth track and the target for the fourth track is GNU Force or GForce and it now must be filled with exercises. Um, I've been creating and testing some exercises with the help of our German uh, fourth learning online group, first learners for fourth learning. We have a group of six people there that, that came together online during this COVID-19 situation uh, and they don't, or they had very little experience with force before. And uh, in this uh, online um, uh, meetings, which are every, every week on Mondays, uh, Martin, Martin Bitter and uh, Wolfgang Strauss and, and sometimes me, we, we help the newbies uh, getting on with, uh, with force and learning force. So we have some exercises. Uh, but they need to be refined and they need to be checked in. So they need to be made ready to work on the Exorcism IO system. And I'm here to uh, call for participation because it's not something that I can do alone, at least not uh, in, on the long run. 
So in order to make the, the language track a success, uh, we need more people. We need people that help creating exercises. We need people to design the continuous integration system. How can we do that with GeForce? Shouldn't be too difficult, uh, but we have to set that up, test it out, uh, submitting uh, test exercises and see if the system um, produces the correct results. And we, have, we need to have people that are willing to mentoring the students. So review source code, give commands on the source code, help them to get better in fourth programming. We need a collection of pointers to fourth learning resources. We already have a lot of that, uh, like uh, Stephen Pelk's book uh, and uh, other books that exist. Uh, also, there are some resources online, but we need to curate that. We need to that all in in a good list and keep that list up to date and we need people to give feedback on the exercises maybe people that are willing to to take the track and go through that as like a beta tester what do you need to participate you you need a github account because everything is on github and you need to have the ability to to uh, clone from github and push new stuff to github you also need an exorcism io account in order to really work with the system and um but again both is free um and you can even do this without um giving any personal information exorcism uses slack for communication and, and slack is like the the commercial copy of metamost so if you have worked with MetaMost here uh, for this conference, you know what Slack is. It's just the, the, the commercial brother of, of MetaMost. Uh, and you need to have knowledge of Git. Uh, if you don't have knowledge of Git and you would like to join the team and work with this, I guess we can bring you up to speed with the, the Git tool in, in a matter of, uh, of an evening session, one or two hours. So that's not really difficult to do. And it's something you don't not only learn for for this um, for this project, but it's something that you can uh, maybe even reuse for for your other projects for your work with uh, for fourth and and others. And I found it uh, really required that you at least go partly through one new programming language through the Exorcism system so that you get a feel on the workflow because I find it me personally find it very hard to create exercises for a workflow when you never have done that workflow for another programming language and learning new programming languages is always fun so um, this is the opportunity to pick one of the 55 51 languages that are there and uh, take uh, a few evenings uh, and, and go through there and maybe learn rust or go or any of the uh, more esoteric ones, or even Lisp, which is like fourth backwards, as we all know. So if you want to join, uh, please leave a comment on, on this GitHub issue, because this is the, the main issue that tracks all the development on the fourth uh, track. And I forgot to mention is that the fourth track exists not because someone from the fourth community thought, oh, fourth is missing and uh, we have to be there. Uh, but instead there were students actively asking for, uh, for fourth track. So there are people there eager to learn fourth. And, and they, they were missing the language force from Exorcism.io. And it was uh, uh, Philip, who is also here on this conference, who uh, gave me a pointer that, hey, there's people looking for fourth uh, learning resources and on Exum, uh, maybe, maybe the fourth community can do something about that. So I, I gave it a little start, but I need your help to, uh, to finish that. And that is what I want to I um, tell you about Exorcism.io and the fourth track. Any questions now? I see Uli. Yeah, so I find this very interesting and I would like to contribute. And uh, 
the major issue I see is how we organize the work in a way that uh, we're not a single person is overloaded so that we can really share it in an appropriate way. Yeah, I guess um, the, the way that I do it currently is I do as much as I can spare on my time. Currently, the track is not public, so it's not mm -hmm. enabled. Nobody can can enlist for the fourth track. So we can work on this. And once we think it is good enough for a start, then we can enable that. And then we have to see how much work it is with the mentoring. But it is always a volunteer effort. So if at any point of time someone says, oh, I, I can't, um, uh, can't contribute anymore, I can't spare more time on this, that's OK. You can drop out at any time. Mm -hmm. So if it's private, can you uh, share it to some of us so that we can uh, uh, get a, get an idea of how much work it would be to contribute to it? Uh, the, the, um, the repository is public, but uh, it is not activated. So mm -hmm. you, you can clone, you can look at all the data there of, of the non-existing exercises, but once there are some exercises in there, you can look at that. But you can't in the Exorcism.io website, you can't select the fourth track because we have to first fill it with certain amount of data. And then we go back in that issue and tell the, the organizers of Exorcism.io, we are now finished. So please, uh, we can enable this. Uh, and, and then they will do some mm -hmm. quality checks on that. And if they are fine with the quality of the stuff that we've produced, they will enable it. Uh, I've got two questions. Yes, please. One is from yeah. Twitch. Uh, this is a easy one. Please uh, paste the address from the GitHub repository into Matamost so I can forward it to Twitch. Somebody would like to I look will. at the repository. And the mm -hmm. second question is from me. Uh, I always wanted to make forstandard.org as an entry page and I actually point beginners there because we link to all the uh, organizations and all the four systems there but what it is really lacking is a learning site so um, wherever you put your learning site please let me know and if you would like to have a short introduction and or you know can maintain a short introduction on forstandard.org it would be great because lots of newbies yes. ask questions in the in the words which isn't wrong but it would be cool to point them somewhere uh, in this in our ecosystem that we're having yes will do thank you Thank you. So if there are no more questions, thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Carsten.